A Dutch semiconductor expert, Hijink, reveals the truth. China's chips are not as mythical as outsiders claim. Can you believe this? For three years, the U.S., along with the Netherlands and Japan, has tried to corner China's chip industry. Yet, the CEO of the Netherlands ASML is panicking. In 2023, China bought nearly 30% of their lithography machines, more than South Korea. And what worries them even more is that China's own lithography machines are starting to steal orders. Dutch semiconductor expert Hank Hijink has exposed the truth. China's chip technology is not as magical as outsiders claim, but it is certainly not a soft persimmon that can be easily manipulated. What exactly is going on? In fact, chip manufacturing is a hundred times more intricate than building a skyscraper. You can imagine the entire process as constructing a super building with billions of rooms on a piece of land the size of a thumbnail, where every room must fit perfectly. The lithography machine is the only crane on this construction site that can accurately lay bricks. It uses an extremely fine light beam to carve circuits onto the silicon wafer. The finer the beam and the higher the precision, the more floors can be built and the stronger the chip's performance will be. The EUV lithography machine is the super crane that can build 100 floors. Its extreme ultraviolet light has a wavelength of only $13.50 backslash text and M dollar, which is one ten thousandth of a human hair's width. It can carve precise circuits below $7 backslash text and M dollar in one go, with high efficiency and stability. The DUV lithography machine currently used by China was originally designed as an ordinary crane for building 30 floors. Its deep ultraviolet light has a wavelength of $193 backslash text and M dollar, making it unsuitable for carving overly fine circuits. But our engineers refused to accept this limitation and developed the multiple patterning technique. It's like writing fine characters with a thick brush. They carve once, slightly adjust the wafer's position, carve again, and repeat the process several times to stack the precision, effectively transforming this ordinary crane into a transformer capable of building 70 floors. Simply put, others use EUV for a single 100 floor molding, while we use DUV in three or four steps to build 70 floors. Although this adds 30% more procedures and increases costs by 20%, we have the advantage of controlling the raw materials and equipment ourselves, without needing to worry about the US or ASML. The $7 backslash text and M dollar chips made by SMIC using this technology already meet the demands of the Huawei Mate 60 series. This proves that your own product, no matter how clumsy, is still the best. Even more groundbreaking is that by 2025, Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment, SME, will have batch delivered its $28 backslash text and M dollar DUV lithography machines with yields consistently above 90%. ASMIC is using this to produce $7 backslash text and M dollar chips, which has allowed Huawei smartphones to re-enter the high-end market. At the same time, the Phase 3 National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund has poured in 344 billion renminbi, followed by trillions more from local governments. Even ASML admits. The blockade has actually forced China's explosive growth. Next, we will break down how challenging it is to climb the Mount Everest of the lithography machine, what minor maneuvers the US is employing behind the scenes, and why the breakthrough in Chinese chips is already a certainty. The content. ASML's de-risking is essentially the prisoner's dilemma imposed by the US. This global lithography giant claims at once, no decoupling, but has actually disassembled its production lines across the US, Ireland, and South Korea. It buys its light source from Symer in the US, relies on Germany's Zeiss for lenses, and doesn't even dare to centralize assembly in one place. Its 2023 financial report was a slap in the face. The Chinese market accounted for 29% of its revenue, higher than South Korea yet it doesn't even dare to sell its advanced DUV machines freely. In contrast, Chinese companies like AMEC, Etching Machines, and Nora, Deposition Equipment, have fully populated SMIX production lines. For mature processes from $90 backslash text and M 
dollar to twenty-eight dollars backslash text and m dollar. Our domestic equipment is thirty percent cheaper than imported alternatives. ASML's dilemma precisely exposes the truth of the global supply chain. The U.S. wants to use technology as a political weapon, but forgets that corporations need to make money. China is not Japan. When the U.S. forced Japan to sign the U.S.-Japan Semiconductor Agreement, it directly mandated that foreign chips must occupy 20% of the Japanese market, crushing Japanese semiconductors from a 50% global share down to 10%. But China has a massive market of 1.4 billion people, needing billions of automotive chips a year. This is not something the U.S. can snatch away by forcing the Netherlands to cut off supply. The more ASML fears the U.S., the more Chinese companies will pursue self-reliance. This is the market rules slapping technological hegemony in the face. Shocking! The secret behind the U.S. forcing the dismissal of a Chinese CEO in the Netherlands is revealed. Court documents exposed in 2025 show that the U.S. Department of Commerce directly pressured the Netherlands, stating that Nexperia, a leading semiconductor company, must replace its Chinese CEO. John Xuezhing, to avoid being blacklisted. The Dutch government immediately complied, placing the Chinese-held shares in trusteeship and forcibly dismissing the CEO. This is not de-risking. It is blatant technological hegemony. More ironically, much of Nexperia's core technology was developed by the Chinese team. The US would rather drive away a technological contributor than lose control. This incident is more terrifying than banning the sale of lithography machines. It aims to sever the talent route of China's chip industry. But the U.S. forgets that the resilience of Chinese engineers is a forced necessity. Back when Germany Siemens sold IGBT chips for 20,000 yuan each, mocking China for being unable to build its own, BYD and CRRC endured for 20 years. They not only developed $90 backslash text, and M dollar high-end chips but also dropped the price to the thousand yuan range. Now, it's Siemens that's asking to buy them. The Nexperia incident will only make more Chinese companies realize that core positions and core technologies must be held in their own hands. The U.S. coercion is nothing more than a safety lesson for the Chinese chip industry. The U.S. sanctions have backfired. In 2025, the U.S. wanted to impose tariffs on Chinese mature process chips, but the data embarrassed them. China's traditional chip capacity accounts for 35% of the global total, two-thirds of U.S. products contain Chinese chips, and our silicon carbide wafers are two-thirds cheaper than those from the U.S.'s Wolf Speed. More strikingly, U.S. domestic chip production only meets 20% of its own needs, leaving no place to find alternatives. When the U.S. sanctioned Huawei, Huawei shifted its orders to SMIC, which in turn matured the domestic foundry industry. The global supply chain is never an elastic band that can be snapped off at will. It is a complex, interwoven tree. The U.S. believes that bottlenecking can contain China, but it forgets that its own companies are already bound to China. Just as ASML cannot do without Chinese rare earths, U.S. semiconductor companies cannot do without China's market and low-cost capacity. This political manipulation that defies market rules will only cause U.S. corporate costs to skyrocket. Just as the sanctions on Japan in the 80s led to a surge in U.S. computer costs, production capacity eventually flowed to South Korea and China-Taiwan. Now that it is China's turn, U.S. sanctions will only make the Chinese chip supply chain more complete. This is another warning history has given the U.S. China's breakthrough relies on clumsy methods and Relentless effort. Without EUV, SME has pushed EUV to its limit, with the $28 backslash text NM dollar model achieving over 85% domestic content. Without European and American software, Huawei has developed its own EDA tools, and the Tsinghua University team has made a breakthrough in SSMB UV light sources, saving a seed fire for a future domestic EUV. Jensen Huang was right. If you can't use it, build it yourself. China's annual investment growth in semiconductor equipment exceeds 35%. The 344 billion renminbi national fund is just an appetizer, with countless supporting funds from local governments. This level of all of government investment is something Europe and the US simply cannot replicate.
ASML's EUV relies on a global supply chain and cannot be built without a component from one country. China, however, is building an all-self-reliant supply chain. While initially high in cost and low in efficiency, its strength lies in security and controllability. Japan's semiconductor industry collapsed because it was overly dependent on the global market and was crushed with a single squeeze by the U.S. China's path of self-reliance plus openness neither closes the door nor hands over its lifeline. Apple placing large orders with YMTC and Samsung building factories in China both indicate that global companies are voting with their feet and are optimistic about the future of Chinese chips. Conclusion Dutch expert Hank Hijink said it well, China's chip industry is either a myth of imminent transcendence, nor a joke of hopelessness. It is on a difficult but determined path. From being mocked by Siemens to counter-bottlenecking, from being unable to buy EUV to achieving DUV breakthroughs, every step taken by Chinese chips is a counterattack against technological hegemony and a call for global cooperation. The current state of Chinese chips is like a butterfly emerging from its cocoon. Although the process is painful, once its wings are hardened, nothing can stop it.